My name is Jennifer Bowman. I'm Director of Music Education at the Kennedy Center. I'm Marissa Regney. I'm the principal second violin of the National Symphony Orchestra. My name is Nareet Bar-Joseph, and I am the concertmaster of the National Symphony Orchestra. My name is Speranza Scapucci. I'm a conductor. I conduct opera, symphonies, concerts. My name's Laurel Olson. I'm the associate principal French horn player in the NSO. I had the blessing of having a mother who really encouraged me to listen to and be part of the arts in any way that I could. And that really came from her growing up in segregation Houston, Texas, and being a little black girl who wanted to go to symphony concerts. And she couldn't always do that. So she wanted to make sure that her daughter had every opportunity that she didn't have or didn't get until later. So I was introduced to opera, to musical theater, to jazz, to blues, all of it when I was a young girl. I grew up in a very musical household. My mother was a pianist and a strings teacher in the elementary schools in Long Island, New York. She played violin, viola, cello, and she was a very good pianist. So I had music in my house all the time. My parents are professional musicians. Uh, my mother is a singer. My father plays flute, clarinet, and saxophone. So there was always a lot of music in my house, um, obviously, from the time I was a baby. But it was my cousin that really inspired me to play the violin. Well, I started playing the piano when I, when I was four, uh, mostly because my older sister, who was two years older than me, had started taking lessons, and I just wanted to do everything she did. I think I was about as young as nine or 10 when I knew I, I wanted to perform violin forever. <laughs> of course, when you're nine or 10, you're not thinking about jobs and you're not, you just think, I really love doing this, so I wanna keep doing it. There are a lot of people who are really passionate about working in the performing arts, but when it comes to larger organizations, more established organizations, the leaders who are running those organizations are typically male and typically white. Um, so that was something I learned very quickly. And a lot of the smaller, more um, homegrown um, um, nonprofits are usually run by uh, leaders of color or women. I'm glad to see that that is changing a lot. You look at the Washington DC arts landscape and you see a lot more women, a, a lot more women of color, people of color in general that are running organizations. Um, but that's definitely something that I noticed when I was young. 39 years ago, when I'm sitting in the principal horn chair, a guest conductor would come through and say, oh, you know, would be surprised or, or at least would notice, oh gosh. And of course, I was very young. I got in when I was 23, so I, young, blonde, female. <laughs> All the stereotypes came out and, and uh, sometimes visiting conductors would not, not trust that I would be competent. Um, and luckily that's, that has all changed. Um, now conductors don't really bat an eyelash when they see a woman or a man on any of the, any of the principal chairs or any of the traditional instruments. The times have changed and there are more and more really talented women out there uh, doing this job. And um, so I'm very grateful to, to the women that came before me who opened that gate, you know, that, broke that ceiling. Um, and I always say that for the girls who are growing up now, you know, anything is possible because, because it's all about the music. It's not about, you know, your hair or if you're wearing the skirt or not, you know? So if, if there's a long, a long preparation and lots of studying, like I did, I went through a long path before deciding to get up there and I knew there were challenges because but not because I'm a woman I, I the challenges were this is like a big responsibility and I need to know what I'm doing I did see a lot of women performing and knew that it was possible um, but to be honest I don't think that that part of it ever entered my mind I just knew that I wanted to do it, so I was gonna do it. And it didn't ever occur to me like, oh, you're a woman, so you can't do it. I just thought, I just have to get good enough so that I win the competitions, win the opportunities, win the job, and it shouldn't matter if I'm, um, you know, what I am. I just, I have to be good enough to do that. 
I want to make sure that young people, little girls who looked like me, um, you know, 30 years ago, little girls who look like me now, whatever, know that this kind of life is possible and that they have the same privileges, the same opportunity as someone who might be more connected to those pipelines might have. I think it's really important. And I really hope that this industry continues to think about why sometimes once you get to the top, there's only a certain type of person who's being hired as a leader. It could be that they were discouraged to even participate in that performing art when they were young. It could be because there are a lot of unwritten rules that aren't shared and, and that's what it is normally. Um, but it's important for me that we keep getting that information out, that people know these careers are possible, that they know they can have an impact, because um, that's the only way we're going to have a diverse future when it comes to the performing arts. To young girls starting out, the, the world is your oyster. It, it's, it's possible to, to do really anything in music nowadays. Doesn't matter if you're male or female, um, the doors are open, are wide open. I look, I mean, at our orchestra, there are so many women, and, and when we hire new people, a lot of times, you know, it's just we're hiring a lot of women, so I just think that the opportunities are, are so like endless right now and, and very exciting. And I do see that in other orchestras that I, there's a very strong you know, feminine touch. It's important. I mostly hope to inspire children to at least love classical music and have some kind of appreciation for it. Even better if they decide, oh, I wanna pick up an instrument and try to play, even if it's not gonna, they're not gonna be you know, making a living out of it or, even if they're not hugely talented, but just want to try and try and play an instrument. The greatest thing I can do is just promote the arts and make it accessible to everybody so that maybe not necessarily everybody who comes to a concert, if they're a young person, decides to take up an instrument, but rather that they are intrigued and, and curious by what they've heard and they would like to explore that further. And that may not mean picking up an actual instrument, but means listening to the, to the music or listening to music similar to what they've heard. I hope that, um, as I said before, that uh, young girls today or teenagers grow up with the idea that this is a profession that is all about knowledge and studying music and having, having great passion for it. Um, and so if I can be a model for them, uh, of course, it makes me make, makes me very proud.